welcome to the Shepherds and Kings podcast. My name is Jacob Trelor, and I'm the host and the founder of the podcast. Thanks for tuning in today. If this is your first time listening, thanks for stopping by. And if you've listened before, I'm glad you're back. I'd like to give a shout out to our sponsor, Clean5110. If you are looking for fitness or lifestyle apparel, they're a great brand. They support a clean Christian lifestyle as well as promote a lot of other Christian causes. They just came out with something today, I believe, uh, about uh, being unified as Christian brethren. Um, and then, of course, they've had they have gear geared towards uh, pro life cause um, and many other areas. So, uh, if you have not yet, you can go by their website, clean fifty one ten dot com, and uh, get ten percent off of anything um, once you use the code Shepherd at checkout. So please go go by and uh, look at clean fifty one ten and help support them. Today uh, is a little bit different. I. Um, I normally have a pretty strong outline and, and a lot of things even scripted as far as what I'd like to say, um, and I didn't really do too much of that today because I like to give a reflection uh, sort of from the heart on uh, a lot of the things that have been going on in our society. So of course we've been dealing with, and it's been referenced maybe in a few episodes, just the fact that it's there, but of course uh, COVID-19 and then uh, some of these issues that we've dealt with, with rioting and, and racial tension and things like that. So I just wanted to give um, what I, not uh, no, you know, no one's really asked for my perspective or my thoughts, but I'm just kind of letting you know, here's where I'm coming from as far as um, from a Christian standpoint, here's the things that I've taken away from it and I'm going to try to focus on with it. First is uh, we dealt with and are still dealing with the effects of um, of. COVID-19, and many of us were uh, quarantined, several of us still are. Uh, most states are open in some capacity or another by now, and we, we realize, even according to most media outlets, that this was a bit, you know, overblown uh, as far as the effects of what the virus actually does or has or is on us right now. So, I'm not going to get into the politics of it or anything else like that. Just from a Christian standpoint, what can I take away from it? What have I taken away from it? First, I've realized that we need, we as people, we as human beings, need fellowship. If you look at the suicide rates and what has happened since we've been in quarantine, uh, they have skyrocketed. They have gone up in incredible numbers. Uh, because man, if you look at, it's really interesting, uh, in Genesis, it's specifically speaking of course, of, of God creating Eve to be with Adam, but he says there, you know, he, he looked at creation. I've created this and it's good. I created this and I saw that it was good. And God saw that this was good. And God saw that this was good. But the one thing before sin had even entered the world, and uh, this was a thought I heard from, from somewhere else, but that the one thing he said that was not good was for man to be alone. It's not good that man be alone. And uh, you see the effects of that when it comes to being quarantined and being away from all these other people and not being able to fellowship, specifically as a Christian, um, that we are to bear one another's burdens and we are to uh, get in the yoke together and we're supposed to um, be edified and edify the saints and what it has showed me is that I need to, first of all, be in church as often as possible. When the church is, is open, I need to be there. Secondly, I need to be an encouragement to others. I have tried, I have not done well, but I have tried to reach out to more people than I normally would uh, during this time. And I'm not great at it. It's not one of my strong suits. I'm very much, I've told my wife before that I could go live in a cabin in the woods somewhere and visit her every other week and I'd probably be okay. Now, of course, she utterly disagrees with that and I know that our marriage would not work well in that uh, situation. But me as a person, I could be fine not dealing with people. But uh, a lot of people aren't like that and I do know that after time I would need some companionship and I appreciate the friends that I have and I am trying and need to try to be a better friend and grow stronger friend relationships. But... Um, Throughout this, I need to 
make sure that I'm building and growing relationships um, in my life. And I've, I've discovered that, that I didn't have as many as I thought I had, or they weren't as strong as I thought they were, but I need some fellowship. Uh, the second thing I've discovered uh, is that um, in a lot of cases, in some cases, I am more worried about a political viewpoint than I am a spiritual viewpoint. And I think many of you have found that to be the case with yourself and others, but we're talking about ourselves right now. That uh, I, I look at something from, I'm, you know, I'm a conservative politically. I look at it from a conservative standpoint that I jump to that first. But, uh, you know, when, when um, again, during the COVID thing, uh, looking at it from a, you know, government versus the people standpoint, which, again, I believe I should be involved in government. And I know we had a great interview with uh, Brother Chuck Harding about that, that it is our responsibility as citizens to be involved in government. And he gave us some very good biblical reasons why we should be doing that. But my first response needs to be spiritual. And it hasn't always been, and it's not always. And I have tried to focus on, you know what? I will do my civic duty. I will do my part. I will plug my nose if necessary, but uh, I will be involved. But on the other hand, my first response will be, how do I look at this as a Christian? And that has also really influenced the way I've looked at um, the George Floyd case and a lot of the other racial issues that have um, resulted because of this, because of his killing, that uh, I want my response to be, spiritual before it's political. Um, and I have, I've had some good conversations about this, and I know that's not a, a thought that's unique to me, but it has showed me that in a lot of cases my first thought is to prove a political point before to show the love of God. And the main that's the main thing that I've, I've taken away from this, is, is how am I showing the love of God? Am I demonstrating God's love in all of the situations that I'm involved in? Do I show God's love to uh, police officers? Do I show God's love to those who I have to deal with situations where now, because of this situation, they're working uh, hours and hours and shifts uh, that are way longer than the normal hour or multiple shifts or working every single day without a break? Uh, do I show God's love to them and show support to them and let them know as a Christian brother that I'm there for them? Do I show God's love to those who are protesting? Not rioting, but protesting. Those who are trying to demonstrate that they want their voice heard uh, politically. Am I showing God's love to them? Am I showing God's love to those who have been affected, who are a different race than I am? Am I showing God's love to them? Am I trying to understand uh, where they might be coming from? So, I, like, I, you know, I'm not a fan uh, of the word privilege, but it does, uh, maybe there's a better word, opportunity, or I don't know, but it does exist. The issue really is not whether or not that exists. The issue is whether I am living my life as a Christian and whether or not I let that define me. Do I define my do I let my opportunities define me? Do I let what God has put in front of me define me? Do I let the obstacles that life has put in front of me define me? Whoever I am, whatever the opportunities I have or don't have. And again, more than anything, do I let the love of Christ define me? Do I reach out to a man who I know is hurting? Do I show love to every single person? You know, I, in my opinion, just my opinion, all of this is my opinion, race, racism is a taught behavior. I realize it is sin, and sin, for the most part, does not need to be learned. You don't have to teach your kids to sin. But to hate another person simply because of the color of their skin, to me, um, must be caught from somewhere. I can't recall sitting down ever having a conversation with my parents about people of a different color because they're just people. They never said, all right, here's, you know, this person's this color and this person's this color. And it wasn't even something worth discussing because they were all just human beings. And I, I thank God for that. I think that that's the approach that I have so far taken. And I believe I will continue to take with my kids. And I'm not saying not have a conversation about racism, but until something is brought up, treat people like people. Show the love of God to every single person, and racism will be solved. But anyway, racism to me is a modeled behavior. On the other side of the coin, so is love. It is hard for us to love people. People are hard to love. I am hard to love. And so when someone chooses to love me and is showing someone else how to do that, it is a modeled behavior. 
again, we are naturally sinful, naturally selfish. And so when I prefer someone else, it is because I was taught to do so. And that is my takeaway really from this is that I want to model love to my kids. I, I want to model caring for every single person, no matter who they are, no matter what they are, whether they are a person who feels that they still need to wear a mask to the store and what, or a person who has not ever worn a mask throughout all of this. I need to love them. Whether is it, a, it is a person the same color as I or a different color, I need to love them. Whether it is a person who attends my church or a different church or doesn't come to church, I need to love them. I need to model that love towards them for the sake of my kids. You look at what Christ did. The the woman at the well, she's, you know, what, what dealings do Jews have with Samaritans? And he's like, well, I, you know, he doesn't say this, but paraphrasing, I don't care about that. I'm here for your soul. I'm here because of you as a person, and I love you, and I'll make sure that you get this living water. That is the kind of thing that I want to show my kids. There's a lot of other thoughts and a lot of things going on here. You know, the, the Bible uh, does talk about justice, and I do believe uh, justice does need to be served in these cases. Um, but at the end of the day, my response is love. Our response as Christians is love. Our response on, on Facebook to Christians or non-Christians is, should be love. Our response in the pulpit should be love. My response to my kids, to those who I disagree with, politically, spiritually, in all of the cases, needs to be love. And that is what I'm going to work on. That's what I'm going to try to teach my son. When we sit down and talk about 2020, I want to talk about the way I love people, or don't, but need to be better at it. That's the conversation I want to have with my kids. And the truth that I have taken away from this is that I need to love like Christ. I need to be better at loving people. I need to grow in my love towards... I I heard a phrase on a podcast um, about this whole situation, and they referred to everyone involved. uh, Their phrase, I don't know, I haven't listened to another podcast by these folks, but uh, the phrase they use was image bearers. For every, every human being bears the image of God. And that really puts that... And puts people in a new light, right? That when I harm another Christian, I'm harming the image of God. When I don't, when I hate another person, I'm hating the image of God. And if we took that thought with us, we would probably change the way that we look at people. That's my goal. I want to love people uh, the way God loves us. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to go check out clean5110.com. Use the code SHEPHERD at checkout. And at the end of the day, let's love one another. We'll see you next week.